Blueprints for Building a Great Life. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 and 29. Luke 14. Amen. For which of you intending to build a tower, seated not down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Praise the Lord. That was Jesus speaking there. And one of the things I treasure so much now are the words of Jesus. So if I'm reading the Bible and I get to the words of Jesus, in most Bibles, they are written in red, right? I just pay more attention to the words of Jesus because the way he thought and the things he thought is everything you need for a great life. So Jesus was speaking to his church one day. And then he taught them this lesson. He said, which of you intending to build a tower? What's the lesson there? It means that towers are built by people. And everybody is sent into this world to build a tower. Praise the Lord. Tower there can be anything. It could be your business. It could be a family. It could be your career. It could be your ministry. It could be an invention. It could be anything. Which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit. To do what? To count the cost. Do an assessment, put up a plan, and be sure that you have the resources. Because it is not your desires, it's not the intentions of your heart that actually bring the fruits, that brings the result. It is the work you put in. And for that work to be fruitful, you must have what it takes to make it fruitful. So Jesus was teaching them so many lessons, a very profound lesson. He said, if you sit down and, dis and, and, and make that plan, you are going to end up knowing exactly how much it will take you and the resources you will need. You know the time, you know the materials, you know the, the money, you know the men, you know the kind of skill you require to build that tower. Praise the Lord. So in Genesis 11, the Bible talks of a group of people who came together and decided to build a tower that will rise as high as heaven. Praise the Lord. And then when God saw it, not that God was threatened, but God knew that what they were doing was possible. Amen. God said nothing that these people have imagined will be what? Will be impossible from them. So it is possible to actually build a tower. And at some point in time in the past, men have attempted to build a tower praise the Lord, that could go all the way to heaven. And in contemporary times, people are still building towers, not just physical building. People have built things that are great, inventions, business strategies, brands, the things we are enjoying today, every one of them is created by people. And the Bible says every house is built by some man. God never came down from heaven to build anything, praise the Lord. All he did was create man and put in, in man the desire and the capacity to decide, to intend, and to actually build those things. Praise the Lord. And as you come to this conference, you, will, you, you need to understand that you, like uh, Reverend Sam said yesterday, by the time you're exiting this conference, you should have action points. Maybe 10, maybe 5, and say, these are the very practical steps I'm going to take to be able to build the tower I want to build, to enter into that life that I desire, into the life that I dream. And tonight, I want to give us those kind of points that will help you to build a great life. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 The man of God spoke last night on having a new mindset that will power the life you desire. It is very important. And until your mind is renewed and changed, the results you're going to have will not change. Unfortunately, most of the things that are limiting us are not actually outside of us. They are within us. Praise the Lord. And it is very easy to actually think that there is somebody outside who is responsible for where you are or for your problems. And you know, like that saying that if you point one finger, the rest four are doing what? They are pointing at you. And that is the situation of a lot of us. Praise the Lord. So when you come to this program, one of the things you should pray for is that the Lord should give you an encounter that will bring you to a point where you can do an assessment of yourself to know exactly the things that are the internal enemies that are destroying you, that are delaying you, that are, 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 are resisting your progress and your success in life. Most of the enemies that are 
limiting us are actually within us. Praise the Lord. So most of the time, I mean, it is, it is good to, to, to fight those battles in prayer, to pray against enemies, to pray against other things that can limit you. Are they not there? Of course, they are there. But now you're building on a new foundation. Hallelujah. Those things cannot limit you as much as you can limit yourself. And that is the truth. I know that these things, are, this understanding is a function of background. But the man of God said, you're not your background. Hallelujah. A man who has spent all his life in poverty and in smallness will hardly have a dream for wealth. Praise the Lord. Amen. For some people, for some of us, we don't even have a reference. So when these things are thought and they are preached and they are said and they are shared, we cannot relate. Praise the Lord. But that's why God gave us the Bible. And the Bible contains the biographies, the stories, and the great acts of great people who surmounted obstacles, who rose beyond limitations. And they were able to build empires, to build, to build legacies, to build greatness. So if they can do it, it is also possible at this time. In our contemporary times, we have people who are building greatness from nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You are not the sworn enemy of the devil. That's one thing you must understand. And there's nothing you can do to stop the devil from operating. You can't stop him. Praise the Lord. So do not spend all your time praying that those, some, some, you know, it's, I mean, like I said, it's easy to pray that people should die. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of us have attended Festival of Glory for more than 10 years, 20 years, and every year you're killing somebody. So if God checks the record, you probably have killed like 15 persons in your family. If you kill everybody in your family, I don't know who is going to remain. Praise the Lord. So take it easy on the killing, you understand? If a human being is your problem and God wants to eliminate them, he will kill them without you knowing. He won't tell you. And in case you don't know, God is a killer. But you don't need to ask him to kill. He said, I kill and I make a life. He's the one who chooses to kill. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. He didn't say whether by gun or by prayer. The commandment is, thou shalt not do what? You see, you're not as... <laughs> That's on a light and it. Praise the Lord. But seriously, we need to begin to understand that the things that are within us can actually limit us much more than the things that are outside. No human being on earth, no devil has such power over your destiny, especially when you become a child of God. Hallelujah. That word that that man of God said, you are not your background. That word has been ministering to me all this time. You are not your background. You have reason. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20, put it on the screen for us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. Verse 19 first. Now therefore ye are no more what? Strangers and foreigners. But what? Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household. That's who you are. So if you're a member of God's family, you belong to God's household. Where will the devil pass to come and, and stop you? Verse 20 now, it says, And are built upon what? The foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Chief cornerstone. Tonight I'm going to show us what this foundation is. The theme of this conference is if the foundations be what? Be restored. What can the righteous not do? So what are the foundations that were actually destroyed? What foundation is the Bible talking about? Because the Bible is not talking about physical pillars or foundations where we dig the earth and put some concrete and mortar and stones inside. That's not the foundation the Bible is talking about. So how do you know what foundation the Bible is talking about? Because if you do not understand the foundation that has been destroyed, you will not also know the foundation that has been what? Restored. Praise the Lord. Are you with me tonight? Let's go to that passage, Psalm 11, from verse 1 to 6. Because of time, I'd like us to read it in the message translation. I've already run for dear life, straight to the arms of... Okay, let's read in the New King James first, then we come here so you will understand, you can relate. New King James. In, in the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bed to your mountain? Keep going. For look, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in hearts. 
If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Go to the next verse. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. Now, please, can you start from verse 3 and put it in the message translation? Verse, verse 3. The bottoms dropped out of the country. Good people don't have a chance. Go to the next verse. But God hasn't moved to the mountains. His only address hasn't changed. He's in charge, as always. His eyes taking everything in. His eyelids unblinking, examining Adam's unruly brood inside and out. Not missing a thing. Put it in NLT. In NLT, please, from verse, from verse 3. NLT. The foundations of law and order have what? The foundations of law and order have what? What can the righteous do? The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? I'm teaching. Just follow me. We are going to arrive somewhere. Go to the next verse. But the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. Even though the foundations of law and order have collapsed. And the righteous can do so much. The Bible says the Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on earth. The next verse, he said the Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The word foundations there, in the Greek language, this place uh, Hebrew language, this place was originally written, means political or moral support. It means law. Let me explain. The Bible says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by what? By the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Put it up, please. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith, we understand that the worlds were, were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which appear. Praise the Lord. Put that in the amplified version for me. Amplified version. By faith, we understand that the worlds, look at the meaning of the worlds. The worlds that is not talking about physical, the physical earth we're living in. It's talking about successive ages, dispensations, Generations, that's what he's talking about. He said they were fashioned, put in order, equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So that what we see was not made out of the things which are visible. Let me explain what this means. From the beginning of time when God created the earth, usually what happens is that God will release a word that will supervise every generation. A word that will form the central theme for that generation. It is that word that will put vision in the hearts of men. It is that word that will make people desire to be a particular thing. It is that word that will make people move in, in a certain way and go into certain professions and, and, do, and do some kind of things, whether they are small or big. The meaning of the word there is rema, a particular word from God. So it is saying that by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word from God. It's a particular word that God releases concerning a particular generation, which is like a central theme for that generation. Praise the Lord. I'm going to use scripture and explain this. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Go to verse 5. Go to verse 10. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and go to verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in joy. Go to verse 12. Just follow me. And they that be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of part to dwell. We've been reading this, mess, this, this particular scripture for some time now. Praise the Lord. This word that the Lord through his prophet gave to the people was the word that supervised a generation. I'm going to mention some people who functioned in that generation. There are people in the Bible who were so passionate about rebuilding the broken walls of their country. One of them was Nehemiah. 
Even though Nehemiah was a slave in far away, and then he was serving the king and living a comfortable life, but he was consumed with the passion for rebuilding the broken walls of Jerusalem. God has released a word to his generation that has to do with rebuilding the old waste places. And because that was the word that fashioned this generation, everybody in that generation that God laid his hand on was responding to that call to become a rebuilder. Praise the Lord. Daniel functioned in that kind of anointing, and many of them. So even though they were taken to places of slavery and exile, maybe like if it is now, they would have gone abroad, and they had a lot of things going for them. But they were consumed with the passion of coming back home to rebuild what is broken. Because God has raised that particular generation to be the one that will rebuild it. Hallelujah. Are you following me? Now, if you come to the New Testament, there's a generation that had to introduce Christ. But what says there was a man sent from God who came and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. That, the, the, the man's name was what? Was John. They call him John the Baptist. He was the one who introduced Christ. The generation of John was the generation that introduced Christ. And before then, the Lord has given a word that powered the destiny of John. Praise the Lord. He said, He's going to be the forerunner. That was the word that powered that generation. So their mission was to introduce Jesus to the world. Hallelujah. To introduce salvation through Jesus to the world. To preach the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Now, in the generation we are living in, we as Christians, we are no longer introducing Jesus. The word that provides, I'm going to show you that word. What do we do? We manifest the life of Christ. Wherever we go, we manifest that life. So the things they prophesied, we are, the, we are living in the reality of those things. Praise the Lord. So for every generation, there is a word that has been released, which fashions, go back to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, which designs and fashions and equips that generation for their intended purpose. So the Bible says, by faith we understand that the worlds, these successive generations were framed by the word of God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to put it together so you will understand. So in our generation, we no longer just introduce Christ to the hearing of men. What do we do? We live the life of Christ. We manifest the power of Christ. We show for the glory of Christ. We show for the power of God. We live out the excellence of Christ. He said, you're the light of the world. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, give, give, uh, put it on, uh, in, the, in, the, in the New King James Version. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible says, the Bible says, now thanks be to God who always leads us to do what? To triumph, leads us in triumph in Christ. And through us does what? Diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. What that means is that because you're carrying Christ inside of you, wherever you appear, it is a natural thing for you to manifest the life of Christ. So in this generation, we no longer pray for the kingdom to come down. The kingdom is already here. Jesus said the kingdom is within you. So as you carry it everywhere you go, you manifest it. Why? Because the word was released. He said you will no longer say the kingdom is neither there because it is not geography. He said in this generation which have come to birth, the kingdom lives inside of you and you carry it. You no longer pray, Lord, let thy kingdom do what? The kingdom is among men. So wherever we go, we diffuse. You know what diffusion is? We diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge. So by your lifestyle and by the fruits of your life and by the results you produce, by the glory you, you radiate, men, have, they get to know Jesus Christ. So we no longer introduce Jesus to men by the words of our lips like they did in the time of John the Baptist. John the Baptist introduced Christ, but he lived in the wilderness. He ate locust and wild honey. He wore skin, the, the skin of animal, animal hide for, for clothes. John the Baptist didn't have any kind of packaging. I'm sure that he went many days without having his bath. Anyway, that's not in the Bible. So don't, don't take that. But right now, we're living a glorious life. And that's how we talk about Jesus. So any gospel that tells you that your hair must smell or your, you must look tattered. It is not diffusing the fragrance of his knowledge. He said, with all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord. 
So there's a word that equips and fashions every generation for their intended purpose and their assignment. So the Bible says now in Psalm 11, where, where it says, if, if the foundations be restored. He said the foundations that were destroyed were the foundations of law and order. What does that mean? God gave his law to men to keep. The laws were not just the Ten Commandments. These were natural laws and principles and values for everyday life. And the Bible says that certain men arose who didn't know God, who didn't have relationships with God, and they overturned the laws of God. They, 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 they perverted the justice system of God. And so when the judges went in to judge the people, instead of them judging rightly, they, they were corrupt. They, coll they collected bribes. And they perverted just. Let, let me show you Psalms 82. Psalms 82. I'm explaining something. Psalms 82 from verse 1. Quickly, Psalm 82, please. God standing in the congregation of the... Put it in the message translation. I think it's simpler. God calls the judges into his courtroom. He puts all the judges in the dock. And he said, enough. You've corrupted justice long enough. You've let the wicked get away with murder. Keep going. You are here to defend the defenseless. He was telling them their responsibilities as judges. To make sure that the underdogs get a fair break. Keep going. Your job is to stand up for the powerless and prosecute all those who exploit them. Ignorant judges. Head in the sand judges. They haven't a clue to what's going on. And now everything is falling apart. The world's coming unglued. Hallelujah. Is that the last verse? Now put this. I commission you judges. Each one of you. Deputies of the most high God. Do you know what deputies have? Deputies in this context is a man who sits in the place of God to represent God. King James says, I have said, ye are what? So God was telling, that's how that scripture came about. Because the people God commissioned to represent him in, the, in administrating the earth, they perverted justice. So when people came before them, they took bribes. They destroyed the justice system of God. They destroyed the culture. That's how the law was broken. Because the law is the foundation of every society. Praise the Lord. Every society that is not built on law and order is going to experience disorder. The reason why Nigeria is the way it is is because for the last 50 years, we had a generation of people who came in and perverted justice and turned the law to favor them. So they did things outside of the provisions of the law. And because of that, God in heaven cannot uphold injustice. The Bible says the foundation of every... Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by what? By the word of his power. Put it in NLT. He's talking about Jesus. NLT. The sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by what? By the mighty power of his command. This is how the universe is held in place. The foundations that hold the universe in place, they are not brick and mortar. They are not stones. So there's nowhere you travel to in this whole wide world where you're going to see a foundation stone laid where the universe is resting upon, where this earth is resting upon. The foundations the Bible is talking about, they are the laws, they are the ordinances that God put in place. Let me give you an example. In Job chapter 38, God was talking to Job. He said, Job, do you know where I hid the darkness? Were you there? Have you commanded the morning before? He said, were you there when I ordered the ocean that you can never flow beyond this part? No matter how much rain falls, God has set a limit to how far the ocean can go. That is a foundation. That is an ordinance. That's a law. And it is inherent in the ocean to obey that command. So the Bible says he uphold all things by what? By the word, by the mighty power of his command. God commanded the sun. The Bible says he created two lights. The greater one to rule the day and the lesser one to rule by night. So God commanded the sun that when it is six in the morning, your door will open and you will come out. When it is six p.m. in the night, you will withdraw your services. 
you will enter into that place that I've created for you to, to inhabit. You will stay there for 12 hours. There is nothing that will happen that will make the sun shine in the night. It only happens once. And that was by the sovereignty of God. And then God commanded the morning. He said, listen, morning, when it is 6 a.m., the door that has shut you in will, will be opened. You will come out. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Even if the sun does not rise in the morning, the day will break. Darkness will be withdrawn. It will be locked up for 12 hours. Why? Because he, he up, upholds everything. So God has put in place laws, principles that holds the universe in place. That's how he rules the earth. For one day, God has never visited the earth. Say, the president is coming. Like God is coming to the earth to see how things are going. It is by his laws, by his ordinances. In Job 38, 33, go to Job 38, 33. He said, do you know the laws of the universe and how the heavens influences the earth? Put it in there. Do you know the laws of the universe? Can you use them to read? The living Bible says, do you know how the heavens influences the earth? Listen, let me tell you. This universe, the universe is the entire span, the earth we live in, the entire matter, space, the skies, we see everything put together is known as the universe. So the earth is a part of the universe. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, do you know the laws that regulate this universe? God was asking Job. He said, do you know the laws? If you know these laws, you're going to be very great. I'll show you a few examples in the Bible. He said, do you know how heaven influences life upon the earth? Let me give you an example. The sun was not created just to give light. The sun was created by God and positioned where it is to power life upon the earth. The sun is what produces the energy we use for our life upon the earth. Without the sun, there will be no life upon the planet earth. And God knows that for the sun to produce that, that, that quantum of energy, it is going to be very hot. He has to position it very far. Not too far so that the heat will not get to the earth and not too close so that it cannot burn the earth. Praise the Lord. Now, this is what happens. Without the energy from the sun, as in the form of radiation, the plants will not produce food, right? There will be no food. So you have the solar system, you have the food chain, you have the carbon circle, the water circle. Do you know how rain falls? The people who have understanding of this loss, they control life upon the earth, whether they are good or evil. When good men take hold of this loss, they control. That's why he said, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Evil men have taken over. Let me give you an example. There's what is called, there are these people that are called, I think they are mostly in the southern part of Nigeria. I don't know if, if they are in the north. There are these people that, that are called rainmakers, right? When somebody dies, you need to pay the money and all. The first day I heard it, I didn't believe. I didn't believe that that kind of thing can happen. Because I have a little understanding of, of how rain, how the atmosphere works. I didn't believe that a human being can be able to influence things at that level. Without science, I didn't believe until I encountered it. People can stop rain. Does it happen or not? Do you understand the loss of the universe? On the flip side, is the, that's on the negative side. On the flip side, if you go to places that are very the desert area, like the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, and such places. There's a concept they call cloud seeding. Cloud seeding. You can Google it and read, read it up later. They gather the clouds, and they use specialized equipment to perforate the cloud and insert some crystals that crystallizes rain and causes rain to fall physically as rain. It happens in Dubai. They do it when the temperatures are extremely very high, when the place is very, very hot. They go there and do some perforation. It happens till tomorrow. 
Do you know the laws of the universe? Praise the Lord. If you're going to build a great life upon the earth, you must take delivery of these laws. That is how you will rise and that is how you will grow. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Everything that the Lord will lay in your heart to do, whether it's a dream, whether it's a calling, whether it's a vision, is going to be in line with the particular word that has framed your generation. God cannot give you a calling that is outside of your generation. The Bible says of David, after he has served this generation, praise the Lord. Everybody is called to serve a generation, to build a tower, to build a great life, but in line with the word that, that, that fashions that, that generation, that empowers that generation. And it is very important that from now going forward, you must understand that I have a role to play in this generation. But how will that come to pass? I must understand that there is how I need to align my life, the activities of my life, the actions I take. Praise the Lord. You will align your life, the, your activities, your actions, your choices in line with the principles and the laws of God. That is how you're going to influence life upon the earth. Praise the Lord. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13, I don't have so much time again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13, put it up very quickly. Ecclesiastes. He said, consider the work of God. Put it in the NLT. Uh, if, if we have the living Bible, it will be very, very clear. It's clearer in the living Bible. Ecclesiastes 7 that NLT. Accept the way God does things. The living Bible says, it said, see how God does things and fall in line. Don't fight the facts of nature. Oh God. Accept the way God does things. For who can straighten what God has crooked? What, what he has made crooked. The living Bible says, see the way God operates. See how God works and fall in line. Align yourself with nature. Do not fight the facts of nature. Let me tell you what that means. If you're going to have great results in this life, you must align yourself with the laws of God. Praise the Lord. How does that work? If you're a farmer here, you know that the best time to plant your crops is when? It's during the rainy season, when the rains are setting in, right? If you decide that, no, I am going to suspend that principle, that natural law, and do it the other way, are you going to have a great harvest? No. That's an example of aligning yourself with the laws of God. That rain that falls, that introduces a rainy season, respects and obeys and conforms to the laws of God. Praise the Lord. Now, what does that mean? God put in place these laws to regulate our activities upon the earth. And now that the, what are the foundations that are being restored? God has put his laws back in our heart. And those laws are not just thou shalt not kill, thou shalt no, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the principles that make for greatness. Your value system, the things that you live your life by. Praise the Lord. Now, how do you do your business? With what principles are you, are you pursuing your career? How are you building your family? These are the things I'm talking about. If you're going to build something, now that the foundations have been restored, if you're going to do everything, if it's, everything is going to be possible for you, you must align yourself with the laws of God. God asked Job that question. Do you understand the laws that govern life upon the earth? If you understand them, you will know how to align yourself. Praise the Lord. You will no longer break these laws because even though you have the right and freedom to make your choices, let me tell you something. It is those laws that determine the consequences of your actions and your choices. Praise the Lord. You are free to choose to kill a man. The Lord says don't kill. You are free to go ahead and buy a gun and kill. You are free to carry a knife and stab someone and kill. But do you know that as free as you are to make that choice of taking that action, the consequence of that action will not be determined by you. It will be determined in accordance with what? The law. Your values will determine your actions. But the consequences of your actions are determined by laws and principles. That's why you must value principles. That's why you must value the laws that God has put in place. If we are going to build great lives, listen to me. The foundations I'm talking about are not physical foundations. I know that what I'm teaching now may sound very high for some people, but it is very intentional. Because I do not want to come and waste my time for 21 days praying prayers that I will need to repeat next year again. I don't need to fast for 21 days, and by the time I come back next year, I'm still standing at the same level. If you align yourself with the laws of God, there's no devil that can come to your shop and close your shop. It's not possible. How will that happen? If you follow the command, as I was preparing this message, everything I was just sharing in my spirit was instruction. Praise the Lord. Instruction. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to begin to close now. Now, let me give you three things that make up the blueprint I'm talking about. Daniel chapter 11. 
Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But the people that do know their God shall do what? Shall do what? Answer me now. Shall do what? And what would they do? What is exploit? Greatness. Jesus Christ said, greater works you shall do. Exploit means greater works. Simple. The Bible says, the people that do know their God shall be strong. Three things there. Number one is what? The people that do know knowledge. Now that the foundations have been restored, let me tell you some of the things you need to work on very quickly. Number one, you need to work on your knowledge. Your education. If you're in Nigeria and you went to school in Nigeria from mid-80s up until now, there's a high probability that the education you received is inadequate. With due respect to our educational system and our teachers, our lecturers, and everybody, and the administrators at different levels, it is, there's a high probability that education you received is, is handicapped, is incomplete. So you come out of the university with a pedestrian understanding of the subject matter you went to study. Why? Because you were not properly educated. Now, if you want your foundations to be restored and build a grave, what do you do? You go back and educate yourself. Not by going back to the university. You self-educate. The Bible says the people that do know, what do you know about life upon the earth? What do you know about the business you're building? What do you know about God? You must change your knowledge base. If you're going to advance in your career, if you're going to make the progress you desire, let me tell you something. There are some things that don't die by fire. It's not everything that dies by fire. Ignorance doesn't die by fire. Illiteracy doesn't die by fire. You cannot pray it away. You can't fast it away. You must study. If they give you admission into the university and then you're born again, you're spirit filled, you're, you're speaking in tongues, and every day of your life you're fasting and praying, after four years, would they issue a certificate? Ignorance does not die by fire. And the difference between where you are and where you can be is what? It's knowledge. For the people that do know their God shall be what? So number one, you must have knowledge. Re-educate yourself. Study your subject matter, your business area. Whatever it is you're doing, please pay attention. Use the internet, take courses, and educate yourself. The second thing is that they shall be what? They shall be. The word be, B-E-B. -B. The man of God said the most important word in the Bible is belief. Christianity is about being, not so much of doing. Praise the Lord. It is about being. If any man be in Christ, his word is a new creature. It's about being. It's about being. Align yourself with these laws. You will do great things. The eagle is not the strongest bird. It's not the fastest bird, but it is the king of the air. Why? Because the eagle takes advantage of the laws of nature. Let me tell you how the eagle operates. The eagle takes advantage of what is called the, the thermal current. The eagle does not fly its soars. It doesn't flap its wings. It waits for the, the, the wind that is going to get heated and the, 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 the velocity and the speed of the wind to, to increase as a result of, of, of kinetic energy. What it then does is to mount on that wing, on the wind, the storm that is, is, is blowing. And the thing will carry it. It will just be controlling itself. So the eagle can fly very long distances without getting tired. They will run and not be weary. That's where the scripture came from. Why? Because they don't exert themselves. They just soar. They allow the wind to carry them. They just control their direction. They are on auto cruise. The eagle is not the highest flying bird. It's not even among the first 10 highest flying birds. It's not. The eagle flies about 11,000 feet. There are birds that fly over 35,000 feet. The first, I think the eagle is about number 11, highest flying bird. But it is the king of the air because it has knowledge to align itself with the principles of nature. And these laws will carry them. Listen, let me tell you something. Foundations, the foundation of a building is what carries a building. The reason why God gave us his laws and his ordinances is so that they can carry us. So that the results you're producing will not come by self-exertion, exerting yourself and struggle. When you align yourself with principles 
and values and the laws of life, the principles that God gave us. Listen to me, you will get results that will amaze men. Without struggle. Praise the Lord. He said they shall be strong and they will do what? They will build a tower, they will build a great life. God told Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the law, again the law, the, what, the law, shall not, the law is not the Ten Commandments, it's about the principles. They, he said, meditate on it, study it, memorize it. And that's not enough. He said, you must do it. Because it is not knowledge that produces results. It is what? It is action. The knowledge you don't act on does not profit you. Jesus Christ said, all of you, all of you who listen to me and don't do what I ask you to do, you're like a man who builds his entire house on the sand. Luke chapter 6. Put that scripture on the screen. Look for it. Luke chapter somewhere there. I think verse 40 something. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night. Observe to do all that is written. Then you will do what? You have a great life. Luke chapter 6. Recently, I was preparing a message for the Brethren in Wealth Place. I've been meditating on Psalm 1 as I close. And in Psalm 1, I saw the order that God established for prosperity. I've never seen it that way. I'm going to show you. Go to verse 40. Somebody look for that verse that says, if you do what I teach, not all those who call me Lord, but those who... I would liken them to a man who builds his house upon the rock for something. Whosoever cometh is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon what? Upon the rock. There are people whose lives cannot be shattered. So when you're crying that the devil should die and all of that because it's right, no. If you build your life on the teachings of Jesus, the devil cannot try you. He will come. You won't even feel it. He said, if you do these things and you pay attention to the things I'm teaching you, your life will be so strong that even if the devil attacks, you won't, you won't even know that the devil is fighting you. You will have so much wealth that if, you, if one of your company closes, it won't affect you. Praise the Lord. Unfortunately, this teaching is not a very popular one. And really, I'm happy that it's not exciting you. But I beg you to listen to what I'm sharing with you because it will change your life. Put it in, in the message translation. Start from verse 47. If you walk the walk, this what I speak to you are not mere additions to your life. Home owner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundation words. Have you seen it again? They are what? Found Foundations are laws. They are words. They are not physical. They are not brick and mortar. Words to build a life. Go to the next verse. If you work the words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who dug deep and laid the foundation of his house on the bedrock. When the river burst its banks and crashed against the house, nothing could shake it. It was, I like the end. He said it was done what? Built to last. The life that you're called into is a life that will outlive, outlive you. You're called to live a legacy. I think this last line is the brand of a particular automobile company. I can't remember. They say built to last. There's a company, a, a, a car company that uses that line, built to last. You say, because that house that is founded on the water, I'm teaching, it is built to last. Nothing can cause it to crumble. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, finally. That's the last scripture I read. Psalm 1. I can't finish this message because of time. Psalm 1, Psalm 1, Psalm 1. The next time I have opportunity, I'll continue. No, New King James. New King James. New King James. New King James. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Listen to that. Continue, verse 2. But his delight is where? Is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. Continue. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, 
whose leaf also shall not wither. Look at that. Look at the end. It says, and whatever he does, whatever. Prosperity does not depend on the industry you're operating in. There's prosperity in every industry. You don't need to be in ICT to make money. You don't need to be in oil and gas to be rich. You don't need to be a medical doctor to be great. And whatsoever he does, the greatest problem in Nigeria today is insecurity. It means that the people who will hammer big are security experts who have solutions to that sector. The Bible says if you follow these things, the preceding verses, it says if you follow them, the result is that you will be like a tree and then you bring fruit every season. You have a turnover. He said, whatever you do, it doesn't matter your business. As long as you're aligning your business transactions with these laws. He said, whatever, whether you're in the educational sector, banking, and finance, whatever it is you're doing will prosper. Prosperity does not depend on what you do. It depends on how you do it. Is it farming? Is it retail? Is it supply chain? Whatever it is you do, the Bible says, as long as you align that business with the Lord of God, nothing can shake that business. If you do people, your business will go down. You know that, right? I had an experience in this church. I bought something from somebody. The person cheated me with a big margin. And the person was doing as if, you know, because you're a brother and I'm giving you a discount. When I discovered it, I didn't say anything. I withdrew my patronage. I will never buy from that person. We are not quarreling. The person doesn't know. If that person loses 10 customers, because of that, that business has gone down. The person will come here and pray. And fighting imaginary enemies. He didn't know that 10 of us are united by affliction. <laughs> and that prayer will not make us come back. Even God, when you repent, he for, when you confess your sin, he forgives you. But before he brings you back to a fellowship and everything, you must change your character. It's not because he has forgiven you that he will give you privileges. So you repent, I say, bring forth fruit, meet for what is repentance? Change. If the change is not visible, there will be no restoration. So you're cheating people, you're lying, you're, you're inflating invoices and doing all sorts of things. You will go down. You can pray or you can. Your business, it's just a matter of time. It will go down. That's what the Bible says. And you can pray all you want. What we need to do now is to go back to the book of the law. Begin to align ourselves with the principles of God that governs life. When you do that, the Bible says, you'll be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And whatever you do, irrespective of your business or your area of whatever, your area of service, it will prosper. Finally, stand to your feet. Luke chapter 4. Put in the message again. Luke chapter 6. Give me that verse 48. Verse 48. Luke chapter 6, verse 48. Message. Luke 6, 48. Message. Luke 6, 48. If you walk the words into your life, you're like a smart carpenter who dug deep and laid the foundation of his house on the bedrock. When the river burst its banks and crashed against the house, nothing could shake it because it was built May God help you to build your life to last. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you.